do you know you can work in Denmark as a midwife? You don't have to be a Danish citizen or a European citizen. So if you are from non-European country, outside Europe, uh, you can actually work in Denmark as a midwife. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about all the process and the things that you need to consider in order for you to obtain the authorization so you can practice and work as a midwife here in Denmark. So without wasting any time, let's do it. So there are three major steps that you need to consider before you can get the authorization. The first one is the application and documentation. Second one is the language test here in Denmark. And then you take the employment for adaptation and training purposes, which is your uh, evaluations training, where you will be judged by your skills and uh, then you'll get the uh, authorization to work as an independent midwife here in Denmark. And also along with that, together when you're working uh, or, uh, as a, in the hospital, you can actually take the, you have to take, pass the test in anesthesia, analysia and uh, pharmacology so these things I will talk about in detail in a moment hey guys welcome to my channel my name is Aditya those of you who are new to this channel I would uh, like to say that in this channel I make videos about uh, Europe and especially Denmark uh, regarding studies work internship jobs everything and lifestyle uh, through my vlogs so if you are someone who is considering career change or want to move abroad especially in Europe so you might want to subscribe to my channel so uh, it will give you a lot of uh, ideas about you know what's uh, it's like to live in Denmark, especially in Europe, and uh, things that uh, you don't hear usually. So please subscribe to my channel. So before we go forward with this video, I would like to say I'm making this video with my own research. So I'm not affiliated with any consultancies or anything. So this is on my own personal research that I did. I even actually wrote the right authorities, the Danish patient safety authorities, uh, because I had some doubts. So you can see it on the screen. There's an uh, email that I wrote to them because uh, uh, I didn't understand. So I wanted to be clear and give you the guy, give you guys the right information that is there. So even when there is something, some questions that I cannot answer, I will guide you so they can get the right answers from the right authorities. So if you're really someone who is considering applying for this uh, authorization, uh, always trust the words coming out of your uh, Danish patient safety authorities because they are the authorities that will be granting you the authorization. So let's do it. So let's start with the first steps, the application process, which is the most important one because it's quite lengthy. So don't you worry, I'm here so I can be there to guide you. So if you have any doubts while you hear this video, so do write me in the comment section if you don't understand anything and I can uh, try and give you the right answers. I will explain in a minute uh, what are the documentations that are needed and everything. Too. So the first one that you have to do uh, consider is uh, very important is if you are someone who's uh, sending this application and uh, from today six years back so if your education and training has been done six years before um, when you're sending this application that means you have to add an additional document stating that you have worked as a midwife for minimum of 12 months full time uh, somewhere. So you uh, put that document together with this uh, uh, approval of qualification and application. So in that uh, document, you have to state the, your what were your tasks uh, while you were working. So and then get this, get that attested. So once you have out of that out of the way, then you go to the application. So application form can be found online, and I will leave the link in the description so you can is is easy for you to find it. So once you submit the application electronically then you need to download that electronic form and sign it um, and also send that signed electronic form together with your um, documents documentation with uh, so your application form and the rest of the other documentation for your qualifications so let's uh, look at the documentation what are the documentation that you need in order for you to uh, apply so the first document that you need is the um, document which states your date, date of birth, name, address and nationality which is basically your passport. So you take the scan copy of your passport and get that certified and add that to the documents. And also it's uh, notice that it's important that you make these documents uh, on the website. They say that they have numbered these documents so it has to be in this right order so, so it's easier for them to process your application 
so the next thing is uh, your name change certificate if there's any because in india especially or in many countries that when you get married you change your name or some reason you change your name so you need to add the name change certificate then the third one is your cv that uh, stating all your work experience and education uh, in the uh, right chronological orders the fourth one is your diploma and certificate from your education institution uh, the fifth one is like when you uh, have this diploma and certificate you need to uh, the program that you have taken in order to get this diploma and certificate so you need to um, provide the complete transcript of your mark sheets and uh, uh, overview of the program because uh, which states like how many hours were the program and how many hours you spend clinical work or whatever so all that information and this course descriptions and everything so you can easily find that on the website of your educational institution and the sixth one is documentation of your training uh, and work experience this step is only for the people who have completed their training six months six months six years prior to this application uh, which, with, which like i mentioned before so that's why you have to add an additional document stating that you have worked as a midwife for at least minimum of 12 months and the seventh one is the um, filled in form or certificate from from your educational institution because uh, that is uh, the validity of your certificate that you have gotten or degree that you have gotten uh, so so the danish patient safety authority knows that it is a valid certificate and your degree is valid so the uh, the form can be found online so they can actually your educational institution can fill this form uh, or if they don't want to fill the form they can actually give you a certificate but in the certificate they need to have the similar information that is mentioned in the form but it is uh, notice it's very important that educational institution send this document directly to the Danish patient safety authorities because the Danish patient safety authority will not trust it if it's coming from you so they need to get this uh, send this directly to the Danish patient safety authorities the address for this you can always find it online uh, and I will leave the link in the description <laughs> next one number eight that filled in form or certificate from the competent health authorities stating that you are legally uh, eligible to practice uh, midwife in your own home country so the Danish patient authorities can grant you this authorization the ninth one is supplementary document that you need if you want to add a motivational letter or something that you want to explain why this document missing why what is and everything that it is complicated to call and uh, let them know so you can write that into a documentation uh, like a, a document and then send it together with your application and the last but not the least is the power of attorney uh, because uh, when you they get the documentation here and the, the different communes and municipalities or job centers can process these applications so you need to provide this uh, power of attorney that they can uh, different people can um, uh, do uh, process your application so that's it that's the 10 steps application <laughs> documentation for your application so once you have submitted all this have this all documents it is very important that you get the certified copies of this you actually can send original copies but why would why risk it so you have to send this all documentation in two copies one should be certified um, and uh, notarized or you know you can get a uh, different kinds of stamps or any authorities that can validate your documentation uh, you get that certified and then uh, a copy of that certified uh, document so yeah the certified documents and copy of the certified documents so these two you send it uh, with, together with your application and it's important that you when you send it this paper should not be clipped together with paper clips or you know uh, any stapled it together so just send it without any staples and everything in the right order that they mention on this website so yeah that's it then uh, your application is gone and then you just wait so probably they will let you know and they can only process your application if they receive the, both your electronic uh, application and when they receive the post application like you know by hand uh, then they will start the process and from there uh, it will count your processing time so they will give you an email when they have they will send you an email when they have received this uh, application and they start processing it processing it so once uh, they have they are done with this application and they you you are uh, like you know considered as a candidate because it's everything checks out 
then they will send you a letter stating that uh, you will be granted three years in order for you to get the complete authorization here in Denmark. So once you get this uh, three years letter, then you can apply for visa and then come to Denmark. So what do you do when you come to Denmark? First of all, you come to Denmark and then you do the language because that's the second step. So once you come to Denmark, you um, go to your local um, and I would recommend that you come to Denmark and not live in Copenhagen or a big city. You can actually if you know someone there or live cheaply because you know, it can be difficult. Sometimes you have given a three years uh, work permit uh, visa to stay in Denmark and complete this authorization. You can actually also work but you need to change your visa type and everything. So while you are doing the language course so you can do other things to also you know, to manage the expenses. So. It's also important that you don't go in a big city uh, because it's quite expensive, especially now after the war in uh, <coughs> Ukraine. So yeah, it's uh, sky high the expenses. So once you come to Denmark, you go to your local language school and register yourself. And then you will, uh, before you go language school, you'll get the, you'll have to go to the municipality and get the yellow card and everything where you will get your social security number. So once you've done that and then you go to the local language school and get yourself registered. So you have to pass the language test in, in uh, the college uh, Providence 3. So that is uh, Danish exam in 3. So, so what are the requirements for this? The minimum requirement for this is you have to pass three. There are three modules uh, writing, reading and speaking. So you have to at least get this minimum grade that they have defined which is 10 and 7 and 7. So in Denmark, they have a 7 point grading scale. Um, so uh, you have to obtain at least minimum. So 12 is the highest and minus 3, I think, or minus 2 is the lowest. So you have to obtain at least uh, 10 in one of the modules, uh, either listening, reading or speaking, or and 7 in other two. So if you fulfill this uh, requirement, then you're good to go. So after you pass this exam, you can um, you can actually there is another step where you have to clear the pass a test in anesthesia and uh, analysia and pharmacology. So once you have passed this exam, then you can apply uh, and start looking for your employment for training purposes and adaptation, which is your evaluations um, uh, hiring. So that's where they will test your skills and uh, knowledge of this midwife and then after that they will be granting you the authorization but uh, before you do that uh, you have an option to take the test in anesthesia and lesia and pharmacology before the before you start the employment for adaptation and training purposes or along along with the in parallel you know when you have uh, accepted and started your internship or the evaluations that should be at least i think the minimum is six months you have to and you have to find this on your own uh, but don't you worry it's not that difficult because uh, for this kind of healthcare thing people who are coming from outside and everything they have their own job portal uh, and then you can find easily their uh, whatever um, uh, hospital or wherever it is available so yeah so once you started this and you also taken the courses like in anesthesia analysis and pharmacology uh, the uh, that courses will be done in the university in one of the universities in Copenhagen so you can actually uh, check out their website and uh, they will also actually send you the details of what will be you know in the curriculum or whatever the part of test and how it will be done a group work or individual or writing or you know oral uh, so uh, you can find all that information on their website so once you have passed that uh, so once you have passed the test uh, in anesthesia and lesia and pharmacology the result will be sent to the danish patient safety authorities and also uh, where you will uh, where you are taking your uh, evaluations uh, training so in that you will after the evaluation they will decide on whether you are a good candidate whether if you are a potential like you know if you if you are lacking something if there is a work for improvement or there's something that you cannot do it at all. So after all that uh, uh, evaluation that, and also the test results from the test that you have taken in anesthesia, analysis and uh, pharmacology, 
that will be considered and then they will make a decision and then you will be granted uh, if it's a positive assessment then you will be granted the authorization to practice as a midwife in Denmark independently or you can work in any hospital or any other place in Denmark so that is it uh, that's the whole thing uh, it's a quite lengthy process that's why they have given you three years but don't, you should not uh, you should also don't think about it like you know it's gonna take three years because that, that totally depends upon you because if you're good at um, learning the language faster and doing the te passing the test faster uh, then it should not be a problem you can finish in one and a half year maybe if you're a little bit slow you can two years so three years is just a buffer so you can uh, for example if you fail Danish exam in summertime which is uh, done in uh, May and June and one is done in uh, November, December. So if there is a time for you to prepare and then apply, reapply in December, November, December. So yeah, so that is it guys. And uh, thank you for watching this video. And if you like this video, please uh, like, like this video and comment. Uh, uh, it really helps uh, the algorithm to recommend this video to the other people. And uh, if you haven't uh, subscribed already, do subscribe to my channel. Uh, I would really appreciate it because I spend a lot of time here. Uh, making this video and it would be nice uh, if you guys could uh, show, show your support by subscribing to my channel.